Hello, hello, long time no see. Yeah, I've been working busy since we got the message of the deadline of 20th of February before YouTube pretty much shuts everybody down and demoralizes them to the point they can't wait for Amazon Tube to start. Woohoo! Get it up, you YouTube. Uh, right, we've run into a dilemma. We've checked out. A few exhausts that could be possible for here and none of them are going to fit. So we've even ordered one, put it into place, won't even go around the engine. Doesn't even come from this kind of engine, but was going to try and make it work. Absolutely no chance that's been sent back. Now, upon realising YouTube's ditching everybody, I pulled out the little amount of money that had accumulated in the account, which was... I'm not sure, sorry... I think it was £68, £68.21 so thumbs up to everybody who's ever watched the videos because we've just ordered some parts with the money so we got a clutch bell, a coil, spark plug, we got two sets of gaskets for these engines, we got uh, a sports exhaust because we're just the way to pull this one off this bike and see if we can chop it up to make one on this or if it'll even straight fit it but yeah we got a sports exhaust we've got an inner tube for the back of this one um, got loads of stuff absolutely loads it'll be here in a few days you'll see it so we've got all the parts we need we bought a new exhaust for this because we're going to hack this one apart to make it fit this. So, I'll get to that in a minute, but for just now. Um, yeah, absolutely good job with the subscribers as well. I've been on a mission to get subscribers and put it out there that I'm willing to sub back and to anybody's content who subs to mine instantly. So if you leave a comment subbed in the comments, I'll hit you right back with the same. No time limit. Forever and ever and ever. We need to help each other. YouTube's really trying to push us off the side of the boat. I always wear armbands. So safety precaution. Right. So we've slacked this part off here. This should, in theory, pop out. Of course, it doesn't want to. Oh, we had it, we had it, we were so close. Yeah. Hoorah! Right, that's getting a cool exhaust. The one we've got for this is a big silver one at the back. Looks more like a ninja exhaust, it's cool. We are going to hack this one apart. Let's see. I'll get you set up over there and see what we can do. And we are back. Right. Need to get this. Ah, around the other way. Around the other way. Yeah. No! Would you believe it? It nearly fits this, just comes into contact. But this is only held on with a bolt at the other side. I can take that out, raise it a bit, and weld it into place. So that's not too much of an issue. This seems to tip back the way though. And the fuel line. Yeah, it might be all right. Maybe even switch the tank around so that the fuel's tipping back to whatever side the petcock thing's at. But that seems like it's going to be a straight fit. It's just knocking the tiniest bit above. I might even just raise it the tiniest bit, weld it, raise the exhaust and weld the exhaust straight to it. That could be its own bracket. Yeah, I 
could get that to tighten up there. It sticks way out at the back. I don't know if it would maybe be better chopping through the cone somewhere and matching it on the other side, bringing them together just to try and bring it back a few inches. But once it's on and up, it's quite a clean line back here. And it fits. It just looks way stupid with that coming way out there. Hmm. I think we should chop it. Find a diameter over here. That matches a diameter over here. But where this part's slightly longer than this part. Stick them together. We might even be able to mod the end to make that half the size as well, just to try and maybe here would be good. It's worth a try. Let's get it ripped off. Let's get it choppy choppy. Boom! So we've done three chops. No, we've actually done two chops and got three bits of exhaust. This will be the first part. We'll delete out the center can. And we'll have a way of mounting these two together, make a little miniature chamber. And then if need be, we'll open up all this, chop the pipe, chop this red tube, weld it together, stick the red tube back on. And that'll be half the size if need be. So we're getting somewhere. Yeehaw. Right. I know for a fact this is going to be a fire hazard. It was absolutely full of, well not full, but there was runny substance all over the place. Could have been collecting on the lowest part of the expansion pipe. It's gooey, so it's everywhere. So that's it for just now. We're going to pull out the welder, get this tacked into place. Well, we actually need to shave it all down till it meets good. Then we'll tack it into place. Hopefully we don't burn through the tube or totally mess it up. Or we'll just be using this funnel and it's going to sound like a Harley. Sweet! So we'll get it cleaned up just now. See if we can get it held together. We are back. Oh, I'm cut, I'm sore, I'm blinded. But here we go. We've chopped it. We have joined it, now it's a miniature race pipe, minus the big fat section from the middle. Hoorah! Now I'll get you put up and see if we can get it fitted. And see if it looks much better. First thing I've noticed, guys, is I've joined it on the wrong way around. This tag at the back here was meant to be around the other way, pointing up. I was going to use it as a mounting point. But still exactly the same on fitment because it's the forward part that's coming in contact. But it actually looks a lot better out the back. See if we can prop it up and give you a look. It will sit. Oh well, it'll be something like that. Something like that sticking out the back. This top part's not definite, I just kept it in there to keep it secure because it did have fuel in it. But we could literally go ahead and fire that up if we linked all that on. Kinda. You know, I put the welder away and I just realised we were meant to weld the exhaust up onto there. 
Now that welder blew through that pipe completely first few shots I had. I had to have the wire feed speed way up high and the welder at its absolute lowest. Not too bad that thing, I'm telling you. I've not run into a problem with it yet. Apart from when I use it on high power. When I'm building parts of the go-kart here on high power it's giving me a few hits and then hitting the duty cycle and then if I leave it and don't touch it, it hits the duty cycle anyway. Bit of a nightmare, but you drop it down one power set and still welds okay, but you can weld non-stop with it. It's weird. So, just a little tip if you want to get a Chinese MiG-100. It's, it's got three buttons on the front, not just two. I don't know if that makes a difference, but it's just more variability of the speed and power setting. Right, so we've got an exhaust to fit. And we've got a new one coming for this, so that's not a problem. So, I say we just get the bolts and get it mounted. Right. And boom, it's on. Solid as a rock. It's funky. So, realised the gravity fed petrol tank and carburetor system needs the petrol tank to be higher so the fuel flows down because if it's too low you'll have an airlock in the pipe and the fuel will never get to it so bringing the fuel tank down I don't think is going to be an option so I might just chop the straps away clean up this wood a little bit to make it smaller and just give a little glue the tank straight on it that's what we will do in fact it'll just tidy everything up and I'll hold it into place fingers crossed but yeah it'll clean it up so there'll be none of all this sticking out I don't even know if this will be on the top or if we'll do away with that I just don't know but could just get a little loose sandwich everything together and tidy it up but it's looking good it's looking a bit crazy because the fuel tank being up there if it was one of those carbs from like a petrol scooter that can suck you know with a primer bow you can have a tank anywhere, whether it's lower, higher, forward, back, or whatever, because it's suction that draws it through. But we're doing good. We're doing very good. We've got a kill switch here. I was going to put on the handlebars, but less wires the better. I might just slice a hole in the case here with a slicer dicer set there on the rotary drill and fit this rocker switch there into the case. This so is easy to deal with here less trouble of wires snapping or breaking and you don't see them in the engine not stopping or not starting but we're doing good we've got nearly everything in place uh, the bracket here still coming in contact which I don't know how much of an issue that is until we undo everything slip it off try and get it back into place and see how much out of alignment it is and if it's nice and snug, I might just weld the bracket instead of a bolt. That way it's a permanent fixture. And then we'll trim all this board down so you can barely see any of it. And we'll just sandwich it with Gorilla Glue. But we are on it. We've got an accelerator that's a lever. We've got the brake. They're all tidied away. This, I would want this exhaust maybe the highest, so that's a bit of a dilemma about that. I suppose we could always change the carb out at some point, so we could actually get a petrol tank that'll have bolt holes to sit down lower and be accepted the two fuel pipes. But for just now, that is it. We are on it. This will be running in the next week. This will be fully done and running. So what a laugh. Glad that exhaust panned out. We've got about three inches of welding wire left. Just, I don't even know how it's not came off the roll yet. And thank you to the little leprechaun that left us the secret box outside the man cave. We've got flap sanders, we've got cutting discs, we've got grinding discs, vapor barrier, respirator 3M. Decent. It'll stop my lungs from choking up, definitely be used. We even got a guard for the grinder to hold the bigger discs. So you know who you are, thanks a lot. Save me a lot of hassle today. Right guys, I'm going to go for just now and I'll catch you all soon. Remember in sub.
Bye.